Okay, hello, welcome. Uh, today we are going to be looking at reviewing, demoing, unboxing uh, this unit here. This is the Analon S2 uh, wireless in the ear monitor system. Okay, so this is this is really uh, quite a cheap unit. This is on eBay right now for just under a hundred dollars US. Uh, so for us here in New Zealand, that's equates to $130, but that's $130 here on the ground. So in terms of a wireless in-ear unit, that is really cheap. Um, the next closest thing here for us really is the likes of the Sennheiser and the Shure units that are getting up to $1,000 and upwards. Cool, so this is a single unit just for, for one person. Um, we'll talk more about the capabilities as we go, but we will start with a bit of a unboxing so that uh, we can see what's included in here. So I have already opened this, I have been using it, um, but this is really just so that you know what's included in this pack, what cables you do have and what cables you don't. Cool. Uh, and at the end of this video, I'll also I'll share all the frequencies that it operates on, um, especially for us here in New Zealand, uh, we have some legal frequencies we can operate in and some that we can't, which I will also share with you. Uh, so, a nice piece of foam, don't need that. The plug, to plug it in, it's always handy. Belt pack, cool, so um, the belt pack is, is actually not bad quality. Um, because I've read a few of the online reviews in that, uh, and one of them said that they thought this looked a bit, you know, weak and dodgy. But actually, I've used the Shure ones um, and the Sennheiser ones as well, and they're actually really similar in terms of their build. Um, set of earbuds. I'm actually using these at the moment because my Shure earbuds just broke their cable, um, and I'm waiting for a new cable. They're actually not not too bad, um, but of course you can plug anything into this unit. Um, and they do have a bit of an ear hook as well, which I like, uh, help them stay in. Okay, well let's look at the main unit first. Cool, so there's your little antenna. This is really quite um, quite basic. It's got a, a metal casing, um, which is good. It has got your aerial there, that's your power switch on and off. Um, and this just selects your channel. So there are six available um, channels that you can send, so, uh, six frequencies you can send. So that means you can run up to six of these units, as long as they don't clash with anything else that you're using, of course, wireless microphones and the likes and other wireless in the systems, whatever. Um, so that's six of these units, so that's six signals you can send. You can get more belt packs, so you could have um, extra belt packs that would pick up on the same signal, so um, for the likes of BVs or something, you might be able to just send them all the same uh, signal, something like that, if you wanted to do that. Cool, so that's the main unit. Sorry, the input on that is just a stereo jack. Okay, so there's no XLR input, it's just a stereo jack, uh, hence what you'll see on the cables. Okay, so uh, this one is for a mono feed. So if I can get that in focus, that is just tip and sleeve. Okay, one, one insulator there, that is for a mono connection. There's a stereo cable, so that's um, to get your stereo input, tip ring sleeve, um, and then that just comes from two individual monos. Nice and easy. Uh, and then you get an adapter for any um, other cable you're plugging in that's just, you know, your little um, headphone jack to your quarter inch, I forget what size you call that, but mini jack, basically. Cool, uh, there's some other uh, just attachments and things for your earbuds, right about, right about. 
who cares? Cool, doesn't come with batteries. What you wanna do is get rechargeable batteries um, for it, because otherwise you're just gonna chew through a whole lot of batteries. Pretty much any wireless unit, same story. Um, I put, when I first got it, I put a set of cheap batteries in it. I think that I got about four hours maybe out of them. Um, but yeah, then just got rechargeables. So they just slide in the side nice and easy. And clip in there like that. Okay, so um, just in terms of the cable, um, you wanna check what, what's coming out of your mixer, um, what sort of output you need, because what I um, got was actually just an XLR, female XLR, uh, to go to that stereo jack, um, because that's what I needed. Um, but I had to get that separately, so you know the cables that are there, so if you need something else, then uh, you can get that ahead of time while the thing has been shipped to you. So then it's ready to go when you get it. Cool, so we'll plug it in um, and have a look at some of the other features. Okay, so I've got the unit plugged in um, over behind us. There's not really anything to see on that. All you've got is that dial of six different channels. Um, and then everything else is basically on here. So you've got your knob on the top, so that is your individual volume control. Also it turns it on, as you would have heard it just click. And then you get this screen here, which is a bit hard to get focused. But what you have on there is battery, um, so just a battery meter, basically. Um, that next one there, that currently says a channel 3. Uh, and then your how good your signal is, basically, you know, just like your cell phone and then the frequency that you are currently operating on. Okay, so on the top there, there's a green light lit up at the moment, and then we have a channel button on this side to change the channel that we're on on the unit. So if I change that, see that we're going up to channel four. There's now no signal because that is not what our unit is on and our light has gone red. So that's a handy feature. That light will go red um, basically to tell you that this is not connected to that. Okay, so um, that is helpful in quick diagnosis. Um, I was using this one day and somebody kicked out my power supply for that unit, which was not helpful. But when I looked down, I could see that the the light was red. I quickly flipped through the channels to make sure that I was on, that I wasn't, you know, having a channel problem here. Um, and then I knew that something had happened to that unit. So that is a handy little feature, just that little light. You just look down at your belt, you can see it there. Cool. Um, which, yeah, belt clip there too. That's a metal belt clip. And like I say, again, very similar to like the Shure. Um, Type of unit there. Cool, so we'll get this thing plugged in and up and running and we will look at the range on it now. So I've got a uh, loop playing at the moment from the computer. Um, got the unit set up there. And we're going to start walking uh, this away. Okay, so I've got one, um, I'm just using the standard earbuds. I've got one in my ear and I'll put one next to the phone so that you guys can hear it. Hopefully that'll work. And we'll start walking. This is an electric fence, by the way, which is currently switched on. To look at you. Just got a little bit of cut out as I turn, so that's how far away you are. Thank you. 
from it. Yeah, we could have been. That's, that's the point on a straight line where we're starting to lose it. Cool. Uh, so just another thing with this unit. Uh, talking now about one of the, the downsides of this cheaper unit that I've noticed um, is, is to do with uh, the dropout. Not the dropout of signal so much. Um, so... <clears throat> There's nothing that says anywhere that this has a limiter in it, okay? Uh, so I can't say this has a limiter in it because they don't say this has a limiter in it. But it seems to me like there is a limiter in here. So a limiter is a good thing because it means if somebody drops a microphone or something like that and there's a sudden spike of um, excessive noise, it'll cut that off, okay? Um, I would suggest also setting a limiter on your desk um, that's sending to this, that's what I do just in case, but it certainly seems to me like there's a limiter in here. Um, I know when I get some extra loud spikes it cuts out. So now the only downside with that is it appears to me that it's a slow release. Um, so really what you want when you're setting the limiter at your desk, whatever, you want a quick release so if there's a loud loud spike it cuts it off and then it releases basically straight away again so you can carry on here uh, when it cuts out in this it's it's a bit of a slow release so there's a few seconds here where you're not hearing anything um, so that's come up in some of the online reviews as well um, but it's, it's it's easy enough to live with that um, you won't hear yourself or you won't hear anything for a few seconds um, which a few seconds sounds short but in terms of what we're doing it's kind of a long time um, but yeah as long as you know what you're doing musically and that it's not going to affect you um, but yeah just to tackle that because you will see that on the online reviews um, that's one of the things people talk about but again we're talking about a hundred and or a hundred dollar unit versus a thousand dollar unit or whatever um, yeah so that's really that's the main downside that I've noticed in this um, other okay cool uh, so we'll just have a quick listen now to what the audio quality is like um, the the standard head but buds head buds earbuds are fine um, they work perfectly fine on stage nice and clear I can hear everything uh, what I'm going to do, uh, because you can't really hear through those, all I'm just going to take a straight line from the belt pack, playing that same loop we were playing before, but I'm just going to feed it basically straight into the computer um, so you can hear the quality of sound, and then everything else is dependent on the type of headphones basically that you're using and how good quality they are, because um, obviously the better quality they are, the better the sound is going to be but this will show you what the unit itself is capable of. And now we will, to finish the video, we will take a quick look um, at what the frequencies are, 
I'll show you um, legal frequencies here in New Zealand, but I'll also give you a list of the frequencies that this unit operates on. It does come in um, different frequency ranges. You can order it to come in a particular range, um, but the standard range is what we need to match up with the New Zealand ones, which we will look at shortly. Um, so those are the numbers I'll give you because I only know those numbers because they're on the belt pack. Okay, so this is um, what we're looking at here. This is um, for New Zealand only, this one. Um, this, because of the new mobile phone systems and that, um, there's only certain frequencies. So this is for wireless microphones and wireless, and it is basically any wireless unit that you are using in, um, uh, in you know, band type settings. So these are the legal areas where you're allowed to operate in, uh, 502 to 606 megahertz, megahertz um, and 622 to 698 megahertz. Uh, so this particular unit, all of all six of the channels fit into this one here. Cool, so we will share those frequencies with you now.